We are at oddsmarket.com and these two guys are covering every single event from UFC. Dave uh, Up is uh, doing the best uh, job on uh, the dogs and their odds and uh, that punching parlay and uh, congrats, uh, uh, congrats, Dave. Uh, you bounced back in style uh, last week. That was uh, great uh, to see. Uh, so two and seven right now, going for the last one, finishing the season in style, I think, with another win. What's up? Welcome to the show, Dave. What's going on, Alex? Jay? Um, yeah, UFC 240. I'm looking. Um, I'm looking at this event. Not as excited as I once was because we no longer have Zabit versus Brian Ortega, which was never really confirmed, but it was teased. And um, that fight got taken away from us. But we do have Chris Cyborg and Max Holloway to look forward to. So, yeah. Many, many professional uh, tipsters uh, on Twitter are saying what went wrong last week. But uh, you two are saying what went right last week. Uh, it was an incredible week for you, uh, too, and uh, I think that uh, we should keep it this way. Do you like this card? Do you hate this card? Uh, Jason, I uh, remember you saying that you hated last week's card, but uh, you made a lot of profit with it, but you love this uh, UFC 240 in uh, Canada uh, with uh, the main event being Frankie Edgar versus Max Holloway here. Yeah, you know what, Alex? I did. And then once I started diving deeper into this card, I'm really not impressed. And I'm not impressed from a betting perspective either. You know, sometimes the cards that you don't find entertaining, you find the most value in. And Dave and I crushed it last week. We went nine for 10. But this week, I've only made uh, a couple bets on this card so far. And unless some of these lines change, I might only be making a couple bets. I'm sure that uh, you will kill it once again uh, on uh, Saturday when uh, once you will go live on the Sports Gag uh, uh, show there with uh, Dave. But uh, tell us about uh, uh, this uh, main event a little bit. Uh, you covered it with uh, an article for oddsmarket.com and uh, we are very interested to see your opinions about uh, this fight and the bet that you have because the odds on this one are huge, are not your style. Uh, you are not betting uh, the main events. You are not going so big on the main events with so great odds, let's say, valuable odds. But this time, you passed yourself. What happened? You like so much this uh, this fight? Yeah, I do like this fight. Uh, it's the main event. It's been a long time coming. They originally tried to make this fight in 2016, 2017, but uh, Frankie Edgar had to back out due to an injury, I believe. You know, Frank comes into this fight off his first knockout loss in more than a decade. He actually got put down by Brian Ortega, who's a top five featherweight in the division. On the flip side, Max Holloway also comes in off a loss to interim lightweight champ Dustin Poirier. Uh, Max went up a weight class to try and grab a second belt, but... Uh, at the end of the day, as a diehard MMA fan, this is the type of fight I wish was happening like six years ago. You know, Frankie Edgar's a legend, especially in my state in New Jersey. You know, he's from New Jersey. He's on the tail end of his career. Uh, it's his last chance at another title run. He's a wrestler. Uh, he, his wrestling was the benchmark at 145 for a long time. He had a great double leg, a great high crotch takedown. Uh, absolutely absurd top control for a really small guy. Uh, he's getting older, but strength is usually the last thing to go. He's got really solid pocket boxing. His striking accuracy in the pocket is superb. He, he has fantastic fight IQ. Um, and finally, the kid never gasses out. His stamina is legendary. Multiple five-round main events. He's never had an issue. On the flip side... Max Holloway's the greatest 145 pounder in the history of the sport. Not maybe, not in the conversation. It's not even debatable. The best. His chin's made of iron. Um, 
we really haven't seen Max drop more than once in the UFC. Even a bigger and more powerful Dustin Poirier took him to the fourth and fifth, and Max uh, went all the way to a decision. His striking is incredible. He is probably the greatest volume striker and round winner of all time. His striking, um, he, he doesn't stop punching you in the face like ever. He lands seven significant strikes per minute. He lands about 40 strikes around. Uh, his take down the fence, which will help him tremendously in this fight, is absolutely phenomenal. He stops 8.5 out of every 10 takedowns attempted. So, I mean, basically, I see the fight playing out very much like the fight between Jose Aldo and Frankie Edgar. Frankie lost the striking battle in every exchange. Aldo was the same size as Frank, but Aldo was too fast. Another factor in the fight is um, Frankie had a big problem taking Jose Aldo down. He tried every round, and he just couldn't do it. I expect Frank to have a, even a bigger problem trying to take Max down to the mat. And um, now he'll have to deal with a five-inch height advantage and longer reach. So every time he goes for a takedown, he'll probably be hit three times on entry before he's even able to grab a leg. <clears throat> and the final factor is Frankie Edgar's chin was unbreakable for a decade. But finally, in his last fight, it was cracked by Brian Ortega. And historically, once a chin cracks, the floodgates open, and it happens over and over again. So I think Max wins the fight. Because of that enormous line at minus 400, I think the only way to take him is inside the distance, and that's what we're going to go with. Inside the distance... At 3.0, Max Holloway. Huge value odds uh, there. Um, Dave, I'm, I will not ask you the, about the same fight because I know that uh, you guys don't like uh, to talk about uh, uh, the, the the bets that uh, uh, your colleague uh, is uh, giving out. So I will uh, talk about uh, your favorite article uh, of the week, The Dogs and Their Odds. You are absolutely crashing the dogs and the roads. You have an eye for uh, uh, catching the dogs there. Uh, again, two great uh, tips uh, inside your article uh, with a great, great value at 2.1 and at 2.3, if I remember correct. Tell us uh, a little bit more about uh, the two fights. Yeah, so uh, I don't really what, think what? it's always how great I am at picking dogs so much as it is how bad the bookie is at laying the prices sometimes. They can I'm just so, be so sorry. off. And sorry, it, Dave. Sorry, Dave. We have to recall you. I don't know. But you, your, your camera keeps uh, freezing. Uh, also last week, also this week, we have to recall you. And uh, uh, Rafa, please, uh, can you recall Dave? And uh, let's have a proper conversation because we don't want to hear, the, hear him. We w also want to see him. Uh, that's a proper thing to do there. Um, yeah, the punching uh, parlay is out uh, to the dogs and the roads is out to the co-main event is out to uh, Jay is writing it every weekend, every week. So uh, Dave, go on, please. You are back. What's up, guys? Am I good now? Yes, you are good. You're good to go. Okay, I'm not sure what the problem is. I'm on KegCast most nights for five hours with no problem. So I'm not sure, but hopefully this it holds out long enough for me to uh, have a rant. On um, Gavin Tucker versus Sung Woi Choi. Um, we haven't seen Gavin Tucker fight for two years, which at the age of 33, I'm not feeling very confident in this guy's chances versus a young, fresh, up-and-coming guy who did lose his UFC debut, but with an 8.5 re reach advantage and the beating that Gavin Tucker took in his previous fight, I have to side with the underdog here. Once again, I think we've given a price at 2.10 on a decimal, which is great for half a unit. Uh, against a guy who... We have, we can, how can we handicap a guy we haven't saw in two years? 
Um, it's quite hard to find any edge for Gavin looking at fights from... He's faced guys who are not even about anymore. So what's the point in looking at fights against fighters that don't exist in the UFC? Choi's larger, faster, he's younger. Um, he should have the confidence over Gavin, considering Gavin's previous fight, I believe he took over 100 strikes across the 15 minutes. Um, it's no good. Um, Choi, he, he's a big dude. Um, 8.5 inches is a huge reach advantage. As we see the featherweight division progress over the years, we're watching the five foot six and five foot seven fighters um, disappear, and we're seeing guys cutting down who are coming in at five foot ten, five foot eleven. That Conor McGregor, Max Holloway size, which is the perfect body type to be su be successful in this division. So yeah, the first dog this week um, is going to be. Uh, Sung Woi Choi, uh, European bookmakers, Coral are doing a great price on him right now, 2.10. Uh, I think you can get similar prices with other guys like Bet365 and William Hill. I know majority of the prices are, are, are around the same anyway, so um, shopping for your odds shouldn't be too hard. Um, yeah, uh, 8.5 reach advantage and... Um, a 22-month layoff is is enough for me to take the dog here, uh, Sung Boy Choi. Uh, second up, uh, Christoph Jocko versus Mark Andre Barriou. Um, middleweights uh, once again, underdog money. Uh, I think the underdog money is coming in on Mark because he is untested in the UFC. And um, he did lose his debut fight, but also put up a great fight. Um, Jocko, in my opinion, is lucky to still have a job because when you hit a free fight losing streak in the UFC, you are looking at losing your job majority of the time. I'm guessing if it weren't for, you know, Jocko's lengthy time at the UFC and uh, dedication in taking fights and not avoiding fights, I think he could have been dropped already. Um, he's facing a heavy hitter who, in his previous fights, when this guy comes up against a heavy hitter, he is getting knocked out. Um, and this fight just, I think, it just favours um, Marc-Andre Barry stylistically. He is um, going to have to avoid the takedown pressure of Jocko. But if as long as he can avoid that and keep this fight standing, um, I have no doubt in my mind that he can knock this guy out uh, within the space of 15 minutes. Um, yeah, so that's it. There's only two dogs uh, this week, same as last week, just a couple. The card overall, once again, is quite a risky card. You probably won't be seeing us go 9-1 and one this week on KegCast because we probably won't even have five bets, to be honest. There's a lot of risky plays. Um, my main advice for betting on this card would be to get your eyes glued on the television and have your app ready to play some in-play bets. Because a lot of the early fights, the first five fights, a lot of them are pick em odds, but also the early fights are some of the hardest to predict. We go later on to the prelims and the main card. You watch these odds shoot up because the heavy favourites are there and that's where you're just losing all the value. There's, the value gets hammered, especially on these UFC 240 events. You have a lot of handicappers now ready to nail these lines as soon as they come out. And if you don't get them prices early, you're looking at disgusting prices towards the end of the week, which if you take, you're just robbing yourself half the time. You, you, you're robbing your own money when these lines are, are changing so much between the start and the end of the week. So, uh, yeah, yeah bet, a, bet carefully and a, make sure you check out all the articles advice. on Odds Market. It's a great advice. Uh, thank you for sharing it uh, with us. Uh, unfortunately, we will, ha we will have to let you go because your camera is, uh, is, doing, uh, is messing with you there. Uh, but thank you for uh, all uh, your hard work. Uh, and uh, see you next week uh, for uh, another UFC event. Uh, Jason... Um, 
the co-main event, Spencer versus Cyborg there. Uh, you covered it also on uh, for oddsmarket.com. Uh, is there any reason? Uh, yeah, I think that there are a lot of reasons. But uh, the, the odds you gave out are very, very low. 1.35. Why is that? Oh, well, I'll tell you right now, Alex. We don't even have odds yet for the bet that I want to make. So what I did was I set a cutoff point. If if it was at that point or lower, it was bettable. If it's at that point or higher, it won't be bettable. A couple of weeks ago, we made a $5,000 bet on the show. We were on Amanda Nunes. We hit it. And uh, we're, we're bringing out the roll again. I am absolutely going to smash this fight. Uh, Chris Cyborg, Felicia Spencer. This fight's a bad joke, man. The owner of the UFC is just a ruthless guy. He's feeding a sheep to a wolf in, in this co-main event on Saturday night. Felicia Spencer is a prospect, okay? She's 7-0. and She's fought almost all her fights at a lower promotion called Invicta FC. She went 6-0 and in Invicta and won their featherweight championship. She comes over to the UFC. She's only fought one fight in the UFC, Alex, okay? She pulls off a mild upset against Megan Anderson. So now, after that one win, she's going to step in the ring with... Up until a month ago, the most feared women's MMA fighter of all time. She's lost one time since 2005. She's 20 and 2, okay? She hits like a machine. She would knock you and me out cold. She's <laughs> fighting a girl. I don't want to go this, there. This, yeah, yeah. This little girl that she's going to fight, okay? She's got no striking offense. She's got no striking defense. She's only fought seven times, so she's hardly got any fight IQ. And she's a grappler. She's a wrestler that doesn't even know how to box. So what's going to happen is she's going to get destroyed. She's going to get knocked out. 17 of uh, Chris Cyborg's 20 fights have ended by knockout. So we don't have a knockout prop yet because the book is afraid to put it up this soon because they know that people will parlay everything to that fight. So they're going to wait probably until Friday, my guess is, to drop the line. Right now, she's like, what, minus 600, I think? That's unbettable. You, you, you can't bet the, the minus 600. But there's two things you could do. Number one. You better to win by TKO in round one. You'll probably get a plus price, maybe like a plus 150 to get it done in round one. But my main bet will be her to win by knockout. My guess is the line will be minus 200. That's my guess. In the article, I said it's bettable up to minus 280. But my guess is the line will be minus 200. I am going to take that line and I am going to smash it for thousands. So that's the fight, my what friend. Is, uh, what is this line I'm seeing here, uh, Cyborg versus Spencer? Over 1.5 at 1.77, under 1.5 at 1.93. They are talking about uh, rounds here? Rounds, uh, what, uh, yeah, is rounds. This over? Right. So they're over talking 1. about rounds. 5. So will the fight end in a round and a half, or will it go over a round and a half? That's okay, that's what, what is, that that's what, what that under is. under one and a half is one point nine four. Yeah, my guess my guess is it ends under one and a half rounds. My guess is it ends quickly and in the first. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, probably a good do you, take. Do you, I, I, do you think that? Do you think that the odds will uh, appear on time uh, for the people to bet on, or uh, they oh, will give yeah. it, uh, they yeah. will offer I some uh, uh, live lines? No, I, I would think we're going to see a knockout line before the fight. My guess is by Friday, 
we should see a knockout line because there are there's already knockout lines for the main event. And in a day or two, you'll start to see all the props for the entire card. But they're holding back her line specifically because they know what's going to happen. She's going to destroy this poor kid. So I think by Friday, the line will be bettable. And then hopefully it's in the range of reality where we can smash it. Because minus 600 right now, is it's not bettable. It's just not bettable. Absolutely. What's your favorite, favorite, top favorite bet today for uh, Saturday's event, UFC 240? Um, the most, I think the most guaranteed bet to make you money will be taking this fight by knockout. I think a close second will be taking the main event, Max Holloway. Inside the distance at 3.0. Those are my two favorite uh, bets Scott, on the entire card. On on the chat, uh, one of our uh, viewers and friends, Gotti, says Max is not a good bet at these odds, in my opinion. He never thought a chain wrestler like Frankie, who's probably one of the best chain wrestlers ever, aside from Asman and Khabib. Don't bet Max. Don't bet Max with uh, uh, these odds. But um, Jason is not betting Max with a straight win there. He's uh, betting him to win on the distance at uh, 3.0. Great set of odds. But uh, what do you say about uh, that uh, thing, chain wrestler, best chain wrestler ever after Asman and Khabib? I understand. I understand where he's coming from. Frankie is ruthless and he is relentless and he will not stop trying to go for takedowns. But Max Holloway stops 8.5 of every 10 takedowns attempted. So you're only getting him down one time every 10 times that you try to take him down. That is an analytic stat that is a, a fact and tracked. And Max is one of the best defensive wrestlers uh, in the featherweight division. So I really don't think it's going to be a problem. And also, it's a bad sign that Frankie had so much trouble getting Jose Aldo down. Because uh, in the past, you have been able to get Aldo down. And Frank had a hard time with that. And Frank looked really bad against Brian Ortega in his last fight. He just didn't look good at all. He's getting old, Alex. His first UFC fight was in 2007. That is a long time to get your brains bashed in. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I agree with him. I would not bet him minus 400. But I do think at plus 200... It's worth taking the inside the distance prop. Uh, 